A federal court has ruled the government's use of the Emergencies Act during the convoy protests back in 2022 was not justified. The CBC's Karina Roman is live in Ottawa. And Karina, you've been reading over the decision, which runs nearly 200 uh, pages. So we're just all kind of getting our heads into it. But so far, what have you been able to glean from it? Okay, so let's just go over the language that the judge used in terms of his conclusion, um, saying, I have concluded that the decision to issue the proclamation, that would be the invoking of the Emergencies Act, does not bear the hallmarks of reasonableness, justification, transparency, and intelligibility, and was not justified in relation to the relevant factual and legal constraints that were required to be taken into consideration. And now, obviously, that is uh, news <laughs> that he found very differently than the public inquiry, the Rouleau Commission, um, which found the government was justified uh, in invoking the Emergencies Act, Andrew. Um, and of course, you know, in this 190 plus pages, there are many, many reasons, um, and he goes over the arguments of both sides. Just to give people a sense of what parts of the charter uh, we're talking about, we're talking about Section uh, 2B, which is the freedom of expression, Section 8, which is uh, search and seizure. Uh, he did not find that there was any infringement on the right to assembly, uh, because even though, of course, uh, you know, people were restricted uh, in where they were allowed to go, uh, that is you know, allow, those are reasonable limits. But in terms of freedom of expression and search and seizure, that's where he found there were infringements. Um, and in terms of the justifiability, uh, Andrew, you'll recall uh, that there was a lot of talk about the CSIS definition of a national threat uh, to security. And what's interesting is the judge found it, it doesn't actually matter whether or not CSIS uh, said that there was a national security threat or not. I mean, that should be given weight, that, it, you know, it's something to actually consider but it's not the sole reason to invoke it. So you might say, well, then why did he say they were unjustified? And, and again, Andrew, I've only read parts of it, but uh, from what I gather, it, it really comes down to this was not a national emergency, uh, that the police uh, and the provincial authorities in different regions, whether we were talking about Alberta and Coutts or whether we were talking about Quebec uh, or, or Windsor, they were able to deal with uh, the problem at hand. What really the problem was Ottawa. Uh, and that means it wasn't a national emergency. Uh, and he talks as well about some of the financial penalties they brought in in terms of seizing and, and freezing bank accounts uh, because that affected people beyond on just the people they were trying to affect. That itself uh, was an overstep. Um, but he does say that the cabinet had the right and the power to invoke in terms of that is within their power, but uh, they did not have the justification. It was an unreasonable uh, move uh, based on all the evidence before him. That's really interesting, uh, Karina, that the cabinet had the right to do this, but that this was an unreasonable invocation of the Emergencies Act. We should mention uh, that our Kate McKenna, uh, our colleague, says that the Canadian Civil Liberties uh, Association is going to be putting out a statement in the next few minutes. And they're one of the groups that brought this mm -hmm. forward to a federal mm -hmm. court. So can you give us uh, that context? Well, yeah, so they obviously, uh, and, and in fact, the judge um, praised them and said this is, shows why it's important to have these public interest litigants um, to bring these cases forward. Uh, but it was interesting as well in part of his judgment is he talks about how if he had been at the table, you know, making the decisions, that he does recognize that hindsight is 2020, mm -hmm. uh, and that in the moment, uh, he may have even been persuaded uh, that this was necessary, uh, but that in the light of day, when you, when you actually get to hear all the evidence and see uh, what the applicants, in this case, the Civil Liberties uh, Association, but others as well, uh, that then you get to see, well, actually, maybe it wasn't. Um, and so he does say there is a recognition of this benefit of hindsight and time to actually go through it. But in the moment, uh, you might be seized with the sense of urgency uh, that, you know, calmer heads prevail as time goes on and in terms of looking back on what was really going on. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't, don't think anyone would be surprised to hear, Andrew, that there probably is going to be an appeal of this. Uh, so this is not the end of that. Um, it would be hard to see the, the government not appealing this. Uh, so it probably goes on to the next level, which I believe is the Federal Court of Appeal. Uh, and of course, this lands on the wrapping up of uh, the cabinet retreat mm -hmm. uh, in Montreal. So I'm pretty sure we're also going to hear 
from cabinet ministers on this as well. Well, if you don't hear from them, I'm pretty sure reporters will ask them about it. Yeah. Uh, but Karina, yeah. let, let's talk a little bit about that because I'm trying to kind of understand uh, the consequence. I mean, there, I, I guess there could be political consequences, obviously, but are there other kinds of potential consequences for the government, given that a federal court has ruled that they have the right to do this, but it was unreasonable? Uh, from what I can tell, no, the, the, the applicants did not ask for any remedies. So hmm. there's, there doesn't seem to be a, a, a penalty that the, the remedy that they were looking for was a declaration uh, that this was uh, uh, unjustified, unreasonable, um, and that is what they got today. Uh, so interesting, they didn't ask for costs from what I can tell. Uh, so it does seem like this is more a, a political uh, ramification for the government than anything else. Uh, and, you know, because it's not the final court, uh, because it will go on, that does give the government some room to perhaps say they disagree with this ruling, um, or that at least they need to, like the rest of us, take some time to read it before they, they go forward and decide. Uh, but considering this, especially considering the parties that were involved in this protest um, and, and what that has meant for this particular government in terms of um, its uh, brand, its uh, messaging, uh, the whole thing about, you know, where the opposition was more supportive of the convoy uh, and what it was trying to say and that these people are just trying to express themselves. Uh, it certainly then feeds into that narrative uh, that the opposition has tried to push, uh, that the government um, overreached, overstepped. Uh, and this obviously uh, a, a blow to the, the government's uh, argument that no, this was very much needed. So uh, it, it's definitely something we're still trying to parse.